Hello, this is Brad from Survival Comms, and welcome to part three of creating your radio communications plan. In this particular part, we're going to discuss resource management again, and the topic is equipment. To begin with, we'll kind of summarize the structure of the communications unit itself. And this doesn't necessarily have to be an organization, but it could also be an individual where the individual is actually acting in all of these roles. The operations element of the team is the inside team. Essentially, they are the group that is responsible for creating the communications plan, placing the communications plan into action, and operating the equipment to support whatever operation on a day-to-day -day basis. The information element is devoted to bringing information into the team. They're the outside team. They're they are responsible for things that are going on outside of the operation and monitoring that and building situational awareness. The support team is the group that's focused on supporting the equipment from both the information side and the operation side. Now, for the benefit of the viewer, I have grouped all the equipment by element to assist you in the understanding that this particular piece of equipment fulfills this role because although it's very nice to have an individual assigned to each one of these elements within the communications unit or better yet a group of people more often than not you're going to end up being a single resource and being that you're going to end up having to fulfill all these elements functions uh, the equipment listed here is presented as an example of a fairly well equipped organization this is not to say that you could not trim the list down to fulfill your own needs. This is presented as being all hazards in nature and overall the intent of this video is to assist the viewer in assessing their own needs and developing their own communications cache. Now we're going to discuss the equipment that each element of the communications unit would be utilizing. For the operations side, since they're involved in the day-to-day -day operation, the radio cache. And as far as your cache radios go, it doesn't matter what band they are, what type they are, what model they are. The most important thing is, is that all the radios operate with one another seamlessly. Radio cache consists of your portable radios, your mobile radios, which aren't just limited to being installed into a uh, mobile application such as a vehicle. With a proper antenna, they could also be used as a fixed location radio, uh, as a manned human relay, etc., etc. Uh, your chargers. And uh, with an emphasis on using solar power to power your chargers so you can do so in the field. Your antennas for your mobile radios and whatever kind of a fixed location antenna solution you want to have for your radio cache. Your accessories, your microphones, your speakers, your speaker mics, your earpieces or whatever kind of accessory equipment you intend to utilize. Your power supplies, which is your batteries and your 12 volt power supplies. For your portable radio batteries, you want to have enough batteries to provide operation for two operational periods without having to recharge. And finally, a copy of your comm plan. Now when we talk about infrastructure, we're talking about field deployable infrastructure. If you're using fixed infrastructure that you have access to, whether it be commercial, public safety, or it's uh, amateur radio spectrum, you pretty much write that into your comm plan and that's independent of your radio cache or whatever equipment you're utilizing. But oftentimes you can't necessarily depend upon access to that. So we're talking about a field deployable repeater here and that's a repeater that you have that's not installed in a location that you could actually place on top of a parking garage or you could go ahead and place it uh, on top of another building. You could place it in a vehicle if you had to. You basically control access and operation of this repeater. And you can choose the location of it to suit your operational needs. So that repeater can be a simplex or a duplex repeater. Uh, it depends. I would prefer the duplex repeater, but if you can't afford that, a simplex repeater is just fine. Just uh, be cognizant of the limitations of using it. Uh, your antenna and feed line for your repeater and whatever power supplies. Uh, it's best to have a solar setup. Uh, some people use a small generator. Uh, a battery usually works out fine. A 12 volt power supply if you have access to AC power will also suffice.
Tower repeater is online and operational on solar power, battery power. And here I have external infrastructure access protocols. What this is is like your mutual aid agreements or other fixed infrastructure that you may have access to and you put that into a guide and depending on your communications plan you would utilize this to enhance your coverage of your operation. Operational maps. You want to have maps of your operational area where not only your workforce is operating at for accountability reasons, but you also want to be able to evaluate constantly your communications coverage and if any changes are necessary in your communications plan or redeployment of your field deployable infrastructure to support the operation. And again, admin supplies, paper, pencils, rulers, etc. It's extremely important to keep notes, uh, whether that just be a notepad and a pencil, it's always important to have some augmentation to your memory that you have ready access to. Another consideration for operations is telecommunications and that could be cellular or satcom or it can be wireline which the use of a field telephone. A field telephone and establishing your own wired phone network between fixed locations is a really great idea. Hello? And also, uh, should the uh, plain old telephone service or the uh, regular phone network still be up and running, you know, being able to establish a uh, dial tone on a twisted pair, computer and IP networking. Uh, whether you establish a wired or a wireless network, it's important that you maintain the ability to essentially build your own internet and set up a computer as a server and use that to be able to, you can put an entire library onto that server and you can move that data back and forth within the confines of your network. Being that the information elements main role is to gather information outside of whatever your organization is doing there are specific items that help them to accomplish their task at the top of the list here is a scanner a VHF UHF airband scanner uh, it doesn't have to be anything fancy uh, probably one of my favorites was the uh, unit in BC 780 and the BC 785 a dual band VHF UHF radio. An amateur radio is perfect for this because it's frequency flexible, meaning that you can tune through your transmit and receive frequencies. You don't want to use a channelized radio in this specific role for the simple reason that you want to be able to program it on the fly. radio and HF transceiver. Uh, this is to contact people uh, like regionally, statewide, worldwide and to gather information and HF radio is a very important piece of equipment to have. A broadcast receiver. A broadcast receiver should at least be able to pick up AM and FM. If it can do AM, FM, and shortwave, so much the better. You want something that operates on batteries. You can always recharge AA batteries. A portable television. Uh, my particular model has a built-in battery pack and works rather well with just a little cheapy $16 antenna. A relatively new item that works in conjunction with a computer that's extremely flexible is a software defined radio. Uh, you can get these dongles for around $25 and they come with a small antenna and these basically combine all of your receivers into one unit that is driven by the computer and you can use it to, in this particular example here, you can scan like three megahertz of spectrum at one time and actually see all the activity in a graphical interface. 
It's kind of like a poor man's spectrum analyzer. A computer is another invaluable tool, as I discussed earlier, and having it tied into your same network for your operation side is, uh, allows you to share information back and forth. Again, you want a set of maps, whereas the operation side, you're more focused on the mapping for your operational area. In this regard here, you're more interested in using the maps for geolocation purposes of the particular signals of interest you're receiving so you can actually understand and place into context what's going on in the world around you. And as before, administrative supplies, paper, pencils, pens, rulers, paper clips, etc. It's extremely important to keep logs of what you hear and where you hear it at and to commit these to paper so you can take and act on those later. Uh, your memory can fail you. Your support of your tech team. You know, stuff like this right here happens all the time. You need to be able to be equipped to address this. So, the first thing is a tool cache. And these are just some of the items in here. You're going to want a conventional tool cache, you know, pliers, screwdrivers, wrenches, etc. But a multimeter, a soldering station, RF crimpers and strippers for working with your RF cabling and being able to repair that. And then uh, telecommunications and networking tools because you're also going to need to work on that sort of equipment as well. Test equipment. Uh, at a minimum, you're going to need a uh, reflected power and SWR meter. A frequency counter is nice to have. Uh, start collecting your RF adapters now. Those are extremely handy. Uh, jumpers for using your test equipment and a dummy load. Uh, I mean, depending upon how deep you want to go down the rabbit hole, you could go ahead and you could buy yourself a, a service monitor, which is a very nice item to have. Programming equipment. You're going to have to program your radio equipment. If you're using a commercial equipment, uh, programming equipment is extremely important to have in your support cache for the simple reason that the support people are going to be the people programming the radios and that is to ensure that the templates are uniform. You're going to need a parts cache of uh, RF connectors and antennas, RF cabling, wire, hookup wire to build HF antennas and just use it for hookup wire, uh, fasteners, uh, machine screws and uh, other types of screws, bolts, hose clamps, wire ties, stuff like that. Extremely important to have. Uh, electrical connectors and electrical tape It's extremely important to have. Uh, telecommunications connectors. Telecom is tied to the communications unit so telecommunications repair is going to fall under your responsibilities. Power supplies. It's important to have redundancies built into your equipment cache. So should you lose a power supply, a battery, or something in the field, you'll be able to replace it. And uh, the same thing with the solar panel, uh, whatever you're using to charge, you'll definitely want that. And oftentimes, if you have the wherewithal to have a generator, a generator can be a handy item to have. And again, maps, you'll see that's a pretty much a constant theme. <laughs> And admin supply is another constant theme, paper and pencils, uh, notepads. Like I said, write it down. You don't want to forget it. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.